Welcome to D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. Join us in our campaign and shenanigans as we explore the subterranean labyrinths, plunder hordes of treasure, battle legendary monsters. This podcast will be following our gaming group and the adventures of these characters, as well as a few guests from time to time. Join us as we start a new campaign and our journey to experience the best, and maybe the worst, in the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Welcome back to Goblins of God. Are you bloodied at least? Oh, yes. Okay, at least, <laughs> at, least, least. <laughs> at least give it that much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty bloody. <laughs> As uh, Cleric, it's your turn. Uh, Cleric wants, has a quick question. Remember, you do have the bonus attack at the axe. I do. You do. Um, you could even move it here to get combat advantage if you want it. If you want. I would be too bad, yeah. Um, well, I'm not getting anywhere near it, because I'm, like, really at that point. <laughs> You're down to three hit points. And you just saw him get pile-drived with, like, 20 branches at once. Which means it doesn't have as many branches left. <laughs> so... That's a good one. Um, he picks up his burning branches. He throws them back there. Piles them all up underneath it. You're back on fire. Can I cast a spell and use a spiritual weapon? Yeah, the yeah. spiritual weapon's a bonus action. Okay. So then I am going to uh, do uh, the chill charge. Ooh, going for the old chill yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll definitely hit us. Your chill, t- the hand from your chill touch just gliding silently through the air to behind the tree. Oh, come on. What'd you get? <laughs> it's a one. <laughs> and it just kind of like disappears into the, the ash of the back <laughs> of the tree. So there's this frost a handprint on the ash of the burnt part of the back. Yeah, kind of a little Didn't have much power here. I'm but then at, I'm looking at it going, what? But then you can sum up all your anger and rage, and in the name of your God, swing that, that axe. Weapon. Do you say anything as you swing that weapon with your spiritual might? She does something truly epic. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I translate. <laughs> I'm still. Yeah. Um. Four, I believe. Yeah, so it's an 11, so it doesn't hit. And your axe swings, and you know what it was? They were swinging on all those branches that went <laughs> on the paladin. And, and it's just because he moved so violently, so massively, it actually is just shocking you that this tree, this this stupid piece of nature, could be so deadly. Now that it finally connected with him. And then I said, well, of course, next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wizard. Yeah, I Flame wreath weapon. Yeah. You just saw the paladin get covered with like 20 branches at once. He's in the middle of a uh, a lumberyard accident. I have to move here to get. Uh, Actually, you can't. It's just a wall. You have to climb up. 
seems to be if you want to do that, like a forest yeah. fire. Yeah. You, you, you get flanked because it's three by three. Uh, it would have to be right there to get flanked. Because that's the opposite. So if it was not, here, not just simply crew. It was here. Yeah, it has to be opposite, complete opposites. Okay. Okay. Steps on the. If you climb the rock. We're going to have to climb the rock. It's, it, it would require an actual action, action while we right. climb the rock because it's, it's all nasty. So that's a 14 to hit. That'll hit. And the green flame is unnecessary because it would only just go to its companion. Its companion is dead. So. You always hit the paladin. Perfect time to take him out. <laughs> right? You could only get two points. I know he still has three. <laughs> At least that's what I hear. Uh, so that's 11 points of damage. <laughs> and so me and that's blunt damage. This is force damage. Force damage. As you bring the weapon down, it just the wood starts to separate as your weapon gets close. So it's almost like this this tree is just pure ash at this point. And you literally with your weapon you bisect the tree. And it it just it's, it's, it's mouth slowly stiffens and the wind disappears from the branches. I'd like to think that uh, as I connect, I kind of looking over at him, <laughs> and I'm just tiny, kind of gri grinning. Little tiny hex weapons. Just because you know, I'm messing with the hot goblin because <laughs> I got the kill. <laughs> and it just I really this want huge kill. crashing sound as it comes. That would have been awesome. As sadly you see it fall down against the door, blocking your path for a bit. No. Oh, no. It's a good thing I killed it. <laughs> In the wrong direction. <laughs> okay, so so basically combat is over. You guys are looking at what's what just happened here, the fact that the trees have animated animated and tried to kill you all. But now there's one of the, the, the half-broken bits of the tree leaning against the doorway. Like its last defiant act was to throw itself in the way. It's du sucks. duty <laughs> to protect the place from the goblin kind. Why did we do it again? I mean, really. Is it really worth it? I would You're still betting because your god's not the one on the top of the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tell the goblins to move it, but I don't think they can. Did you tell the I goblins can, to I move it? set it on fire as some more. You could if do you that. guys would lend me some fire. <laughs> I got, give you a I got torch. Two uh, that like there's that song. torch that's still burning on the ground. Right. <laughs> and you just went. <laughs> I think we'll have to move it. Well, I think. you're not it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually a good idea. We could light it on fire, let it burn down. Take a long rest. Take a long rest. <laughs> a long rest. Yeah. Yeah. Best campfire ever for a long rest. <laughs> the bodies of our enemies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we use what you want is that? Can you know? Well, like, we rest, use what so. is you know, within rest. region that hand. Yeah. Yeah. I've got four hit points. <laughs> no, but will nature allow you to complete that short rest? That long rest. Oh, uh, we're just running to uh, homebrew that. Mm -hmm. Playing goblins. Playing evil goblins. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but the point is, it a waste to use it for one and a half, four hit points left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since you're going to lay on hand to get yourself, what, 15 points back, yeah. something like that? Yeah. I think it's 511, something like that. Well, since. Let's see. <laughs> okay, so you guys are basically the paladin is laying on hands and stepping over the. Large chunks of tree, so you're, you're basically going to burn the tree. Yeah. Okay. The so I did it. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. I'll just take like, a nap, guys. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm under like nature check. Before we take a long rest, I'm gonna do a prayer of healing. Okay. So everybody gets some hit points back. Oh. You guys look oh, terrible. good. <laughs> so let's see. I think it's amazing. Next time I didn't get. Next try tree. Slap the rat. <laughs> Next try tree. You go out first. <laughs> I, uh, I think I scraped I like my that toe. Idea. Everybody gets <laughs> 14 points back. Oh, good oh. points. As you're like, I'm going to shovel on my ding dang. And everybody feels the, the, the evil, dark, cleric energy filling your, your, your black, blooded, green I felt, evilness. I felt energized and go, 
Where's the next tree? <laughs> Somebody smack him before I do. So, uh, go ahead and you give me an H roll. Yeah. And you give me an arcana roll. Right. 17. So, uh, you're, you're like, tree, yeah, and you're like, immediately, like, these were not trees. These acted more, you know, like automatons than trees. Trees were communicated or, you know, had more abilities. You believe these are, uh, animated trees. Which would make sense with that role. Which would have required, like, powerful druids or wizards to create long ago. Especially when you're looking at the chopped parts, you know, like there's many, 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 many rings. Thinking that this these trees are probably at least two thousand years old. Were. Oh, they still walk. No. Were. They're dead now. They were two thousand years old. So I see him looking at it and I'm like does it look like you? It's like a dead tree. <laughs> My tin, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it's looking like a dead tree. You're like, kindling. Maybe it's one of there those little bitey bushes that we have back at the base. <laughs> Maybe that's what they look like in the ground. Yeah, that's what they look like. <laughs> so I kind of impart the knowledge of like, because I'm a smart ass and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I take the moment to share that um, it was actually a tree imbued with the spirit of protection, like an animated guardian. Ooh. And I go over its head and I start describing what it is. <laughs> Techno battle, <laughs> arcana style. Because I He's not very good at his job anymore, is he? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but it was a pretty good tree, I guess. I mean, he makes, he makes great firewood. Oh, yeah. If that's his job, he's doing it great. Until we came along, it was doing great at being a tree. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, until you guys came along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so between... Uh, hey, moral support. Somebody give me a strength roll for the hole. I'm assuming you want to pull it away from the door so you can look at the door during your, your, your long rest. Oh, it needs to burn down to ash, and then we can just scoop it away. Okay, scoop it away. so you guys I'm just basically... Move it out. Okay. So that's 17. Oh, yeah. Bugbear's just like, after giving this techno babble talk, his arms are now bulging, and he's pulling the tree away on fire. <coughs> and it's, you know, pulls it just far enough so we can safely walk around the flames to get to the door. That's why, you know, I get an extra 10%. I mean, 20%. Because uh, you're the brains and the brawn. Right. Okay, so uh, cleric and paladin, can both of you give me a religion roll? You are the spiritual leader, at least. <laughs> so you're looking at this door, and you sense that there's some kind of trick to unlocking the door. <clears throat> there, there's some kind of religious doctrine going on on the door's mosaic that seems to be out of order, but you're just not placing your thumb on it. Probably because I've seen this episode of Stargate. Probably because you look up and again see that your god is not the chosen protector god right? of this temple, and that has got your universe totally out of whack. I, I, I yeah. Okay. Totally, uh, completely out of whack. So you guys are spending a few hours over the burning, you know, animated tree looking at the gate you're seeing. <laughs> right. It's just not right. So I will give you that one of you two because obviously there's that religious doctrine there between you guys, that you can assist, you can do the help action for her, because I'm betting she's probably got better wisdom for that skill, to give her advantage on the roll. It's the last of the animated trees burning out, and you all have completed your long rest and gotten back your hit points that you didn't lose, because I'm looking at the balance. Yeah, well, he, he, he lost yeah. most of his life, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was very unwise. <laughs> You know what? I will call, right? Uh, not if I eat them. <laughs> My final act before I die is to chew on you. <laughs> Go fight into your artery. 
Everybody down. Come back here, Celestials. So are, are you going to give, give her the help? <laughs> yep. Okay, well, you can assist okay. with the help action, so you have advantage on your next religion roll. Okay. As you've been sitting there, you whipped out your little book of prayers, which is basically like this torture manual. And you're looking at this mosaic, and you're like, something is wrong with these goblin heads, and they seem to be out of order. No, what the problem is, <laughs> my god is not on the top there. And it, well, that's the problem, is you keep looking up, and it pisses you off that the gods are not in their proper order. No. So maybe that's the problem. But they're not in the proper order. Uh-huh. So, 14. 14. You're, you're looking at it, and you're still thinking... No, religion, religion is in. Oh, is it in? Yeah, yeah, it's not wisdom. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately. And, and just something's not clicking in your head right. It could be that the, the goblin religion is, is changed over thousands of years? No, 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 no. Could be. <laughs> no, could, no. Couldn't be that the religious dogma hasn't altered in 2,000 years. No. No, we all know that. That's <laughs> good. No. I'm very adamant about the fact that no. Now, you do have your hobgoblin saving face, I'm just saying. That's true. (laughs) Could give you a plus four. Okay. You use your saving face. Okay, so all you needed was a plus one to 15, which is magic number. But you're looking at this and you're like, you, you, you have this moment where you're looking at it and they're all watching you. And you like look over your shoulder like, I wonder if they notice I don't know what I'm doing here. And then all of a sudden you immediately realize, aha, goblins must always be weary of being betrayed from their own, the strong and survive. This is what it's all about. And immediately you start clicking these little tiles and mosaics. And you're putting, you're realizing that the order of the gods doesn't match the heaven and hell landscapes that, they, that, that are in the mosaic. And you start sliding them and locking them into place. Mainly because you're getting looked at and you're like, oh shit, I better do something right or I'll be sacrificed so they get a better cleric next time. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you click the last two in place and it turns your stomach because it has your heavenly host as the second in line in heaven. Uh. <laughs> Realizing that pure brute force does not trump smart tactics. And you're getting this feeling. Because remember, you worship... No. The goblin god. Like you worship the hobgoblin, the warrior god. This temple is dedicated to the hobgoblins. And that's why you're realizing as you walk them in place and they, they click, that this was hobgoblin made, not goblin made. What you mean, go back? And yet, somehow, you didn't know it. Actually, that's how he helped you just <laughs> now. Remember, he's giving you the rhetoric that this is. Hobgoblin architecture. Remember when he helped you yeah. get, get advantage on that roll? That's what he threw out was his little, you know, little hobgoblin, pro hobgoblin, anti goblinoid. Uh, and I'm like, again. no, that can't be right. <laughs> oh yeah. my god, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> As all of a sudden the gate clicks into place and the portal slowly starts dropping down into the ground, you see it like pulling ah. mud and dirt and roots down I get up. with it. <laughs> and it, it opens with a groan, if not a grunting growl like we just heard. <laughs> As it starts to slide open. And this is when I'll grab those for the green natural Okay, and, and I'll say, yes. During this whole time, we got the long rest. So you got the long rest, so you've gotten your spells back. You can spend your hit dice, which I don't think many folks have to after you did that amazing roll. Uh, that was pretty good, huh? That, that was a great heal. <laughs> don't, don't expect that every time, guys. <laughs> it's just because you're trying so to save his race. He's so far. You're like, right. okay, I can't pooch this one. If I pooch this one, they'll, they'll get a new healer from amongst the goblins. <laughs> can't have that happen. No. Amongst the goblins? They're not smart enough. I mean, what? Ooh, knees are cheap of church. Pretty much, Jar Jar Binks. I'll go with a mix between Chaka and Jar Jar Binks. So, 
there's an episode of Stargate. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few of them. <laughs> yes. They're in a pyramid, or they're, they're trying to open a pyramid. There's quite a few of those, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, there's one episode where they try to open a pyramid. The rest of them are already open. Oh, okay. <laughs> I may watch Stargate too much. I haven't watched it before. Perish the fuck. That's just wrong. I, you know what sucks is I'm missing uh, season seven, eight, and if there's anything over nine. So I watch one through six and then nine, like over and over again. That's, it's terrible. Anyway, the, the, the creation myth that was depicted on the pyramid was out of order. Uh -huh. And that's how they had to open the pyramid. Uh, so. Useless Stargate knowledge. It's not useless. <laughs> Save someone's life. Actually, in that episode, most more people died than made it back. Of course, you know, I was actually just talking to wife about Stargate because she hasn't seen a lot of it. If you're watching MacGyver on Fear of Night Count's channel. Hell, and we're looking at you're supposed to be in like Nicaragua type of South America. But it's totally Canadian mountains and, and tundra. <laughs> but it's supposedly Central America, as you've seen the rain and mist and coldness of the water, the land and the water. And they're like, it's so hot. And you see the breath <laughs> when they're talking. This must be like in Panama, you know, up in those high altitude parts where, you know, all of a sudden they realize, oh, it's so high in altitude, it's cold. And under the Right. They're just blowing the humidity. That's what it is. But all all the actors who went from MacGyver to Stargate. Oh, did they? I mean, I know Richard Dean Anderson, obviously. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, remember the general? Have you said Adonis, Adonis. Mm -hmm. That used to be his boss of the Phoenix Foundation. Uh -huh. Because, like I was joking with Kelly, it's like, what are the odds? How many of them bought houses in Canada when MacGyver was on the air? He was on the air for like eight years. So when they film Stargate up in Canada, you have all the folks already right there, probably have their houses up there, because it's not like you sell a house and you get a house in Kishmar. To the whole, oh, no, no, sure. Of course, the uh, Deloise boys as the directors of the series. That's something that I think really helped Stargate to hit, was the fact you have two directors and executive producers who love the, the, the show. And you've got the band next. Down the Louise one. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, uh, I remember that one. That one, oh. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was trying to think of the name of the episode. Oh, I don't even bother trying to remember the name. No, so I was just trying to prove to myself how much I don't want to show. You're, you're missing out. And if you have anything else, check, uh, catch, try to catch the movies on Netflix. I know. Oh, sh I've got a copy of the original movies, though. Because they added what, like two or three more movies that they picked up the guy from Farscape? Yeah. They, they made some really bad movies. Well, I, I'm not sure that I've seen all the movies. When they went the whole angle of Ascension and Bad Ascension, because mm -hmm. did you see the series in like the last season? Mm -hmm. Where they basically. Actually, around the whole. So before they did their offshoot, The Atlantis? Yeah. Which I was highly disappointed in, but you know everybody's like, "Oh, give it a second, one more chance." I'm like, "Oh, but it was, man, it wasn't the same." Anyways, um, yeah, we did get Jason Momoa. Yeah, I'm gonna yes. have to rewatch that. Too. I think that was that was his best <laughs> acting in anything was from playing Ronan. 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 Ronan Dex. I don't know. I thought he was good in Rock Off the Man. I seem to remember him acting in that. <laughs> he was shirtless a lot. <laughs> he would just be shirtless and rap. That was his hair. No, he really did do a good job as Ronan. But, uh. Because his hair could have developed. Yes, he did. Um. The. I liked Atlantis in some things, but not in others. Like, the, uh. uh the rape is a cool, a cool concept. The uh, the leader of the main Atlantis team. Oh yeah. Um, he seemed to me like his actor was trying to be Richard D. Anderson's yeah. character. 
for Messy Run. He was trying too hard. He was trying too hard, and it was terrible, and he didn't have that kind of presence. Mm -hmm. that, That's why the Barona is not here. It's sort of like, yeah, he's not he's not the alpha male leader. He's trying to run the perfect soldier boy. I didn't like him, but I liked Roman was a great character, and um, McKay, the scientist that came from SG One, he was funny as hell. He really got so much better mm -hmm. in Atlantis than he was in SG One. Because, of course, well, remember in SG One he was gay. Yes, he, he was. He hated in everything he saw. And in Atlantis, Atlantis, he was just, he started becoming this really lovable guy, guy who <laughs> tries to be social. Yeah, but has no I mean, <laughs> has no social skills. He does it like in SG One. He tells. Samantha Carter, he tells her, um, uh, it sucks, I really have a thing for dumb blondes. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like the smartest person on the... <laughs> Give her five you know, minutes in the lab and she'll solve your problem. <laughs> she was the MacGyver, you know. And uh, in the opening episode, they actually use the line. Like, it took us four years of a supercomputer to MacGyver something together. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about making the gate run. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, like, they're, like I think it's like in the first episode, like like when they're like trying to figure out some, something, like Richard Dean is, you know, is, is, is like, it's like, can we like figure something out like that? Like, oh, so well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they actually do like like he kind of like covers his mouth and muffles the MacGyver. <laughs> I'm watching uh, Umbrella Academy right now. I just watched the first I've episode. I've got to start that one. I, I, I have very good. I'm on episode seven. It's still on my list. I, I started it, what, yesterday? <laughs> Burn through it. One of those that I don't want to listen to and I want to actually watch it, watch it. Yeah, something tells me it's, it's lots of eye candy. It is a lot, it's a lot of visual. You have to watch it. I finished The Expanse. Third season, fourth or third season. I thought that was the third season. Uh, they're supposed to be, but they're canceled by sci-fi. It's coming in the Amazon. On the new season, so I'm hopeful for it because I really like these things. Yeah. And have you read the books? Oh, it's oh. 20 novels a square feet in the whole series. So there's there's like Commitment. 60 years of storyline of we found the gate and we found the gate of gates that basically leads to <laughs> the infinite universes. So there's now a new expanse that happens because all of a sudden our solar system went from solar system to it's our solar system and inside this you, you saw the final one, the, the sphere with the spheres inside the sphere. Mm, the spheres when they go that inside was the end of the third season. Right? Each one of those little circles you saw in there that was another gate to another solar system. Oh my. So basically there's an infinite solar systems now available for resources. So you have the Mars faction, the Earth faction, the Belter faction that now actually have they can go wherever the fuck they want to do that. But part of the storyline is there's there's ancient cultures henceforth the one that built this. But there's also cultures of annihilation. Sort of, sort of like you can tell the folks who wrote the story for Halo, their hands have always been Because, you know, the ring in Halo, they kind of reverse engineered the idea that instead of teleportation, it's annihilation. Well, the whole point of there's an evil species and a good species, and both are, are gone. But you never know in the books if some stupid human might run into something and un unlock something or figure some technology out. <laughs> or it's a stupid human. Or the stupid humans having socio-economic wars in galaxies because now everybody's doing colonialism and wanting to plant their flag on planets. Who's to say you can legally do that or not? Yeah, yeah. I just couldn't get into it. And the fact that the, the uber cool Martian. It was a little slow. Oh, the uh, first season yeah. was ridiculous. It was like slow, but the first and second like, season were like one, one book. They stretch. The guy, way there was three, but there were two empty seats next to me, and uh, you know, Fox edit for this, you sit and sit away from everyone. Right. Right. So he could have sat down, the guy who owns us, and he didn't. Um, but we made awkward eye contact, and so I was like, I don't bite strangers. <laughs> then you should say, my name is Jim. <laughs> yeah. I'm your party at the end of the day. I've had all my shots. What the, like, yeah, that's what you should have said. I've had all my shots.
Jim. Over here on that side? Yeah. I'm like, where have they, have they hidden the trash can? So is Jerome the only one moving? Or is the whole family moving? Jerome is moving and Have the same last name. Uh, so. I guess I should be No, you're fine. Third one is Johnson, and Jerome's Cameron. Oh. And Laura is his his wife that they divorced right now, and uh, he's moving in March. Uh, okay. He just bought a house in Arkansas, and a lot of people are moving to like Arkansas. Really? I know. I don't really know that. It's just far away from here. No, I'm, I'm not just, going. I, I had a somebody from work just up and moved to Arkansas. I don't know. But yeah, he's and then the girls are going to finish out school here and then move up to Arkansas with their learning. Surprise, surprise, it hasn't warmed up outside. Still a little chilly. A little chillier. <laughs> yeah. Hence the wool coat. <laughs> I was the man wearing a jacket because I was covered in rain and, and I suppose my skin was probably cold and such. Uh, and I was like, because I live in deep snow. So. Yeah. I've, I've, I've got a jacket. I've got a hooded windbreaker. And then I got this for my cold weather kind of stuff. Like, I don't have a hooded really cold weather. I have a flannel. <laughs> yeah, I, I like a yeah. t-shirt. It's I not get, helping you much. I, I usually am going to work between it does really 6, good when 30, I and 7. I'm going to work, you know, 5 So hours. when it's 32 yeah. degrees outside, it's like, put five yeah, on gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's freaking cold. <laughs> so I two I, I'm like, can you warm up yet, please? Please, please, please. I don't. I was um, I was at Jerome's house last night, and it was so warm in there that I couldn't sleep. I had to go sit outside. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh. And I checked on. the thermostat, and it was at seventy-two. Uh, so the thermostat in my house when I left it was at seventy-one because it's freaking freezing in there. Seventy-one is normal. <laughs> seventy-one is. Whole roll. Okay, so just just to let you know, when you get older, you actually get colder. Because <laughs> you're really such an old fart. Yeah, you feel it in your bones. You really do, actually. Hey, you know, I I'm getting bored. <laughs> Live with somebody who's having hot flashes. I'm never cold. I'm never hot. I I'm. I'm I'm actually waiting for that just so I can warm up. You <laughs> say that tells me that's not going to be how it works. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way. Remember those nights where we had 30 degree at night nights? Mm -hmm. Our window is open. Oh, that sounds so good. I'm the one that's under the window. Oh. So I will, I will kill you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm right next to the window. <laughs> Every time I wake up, I can see my breath. I'm waiting for it to at least get to 80. I, I enjoy it right until I have to move my knee. Then I'll sit. The humidity is what bothers my knee. The weather, not so much. Hmm? Weather changes, humidity, cold. <laughs> Shadow passing over the sun. <laughs> Just moving in general. Right. <laughs> so, sleeping, sleeping really well. So you guys well. need to recover as she's standing there and she clicks this gate and it's rumbling down. And it's opening and the daylight is you know, streaming over your shoulders. As, as all of you guys are getting a little closer to her to see what's, what's happening as all of a sudden this is rumbling mm -hmm. and you're seeing the light. I hope we're ready for the event. Oh, you remind them about that? Yeah. What? Remind me what? Yeah, that's the door. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, because I, I 
I wanted to find out. Is it daytime or nighttime? It, it's daytime. Yeah, it's good night. <laughs> it, it, stop for no, eight it's, hours. It's nighttime. Just think about it. You guys stopped for eight hours. It was daytime when that fight yeah. took all of like, 30 yeah. seconds to happen. Oh, you mean not everybody's with her at the gate? Well, oh, well, if anything, we were, we were in the pile of bodies. This is the pile of bodies over here. Let's put the compass in front of the pile. Okay, as the gates are rumbling down. And immediately when you guys look inside. No, I don't want to wait to that long. <laughs> I don't want to find him. <laughs> you see the, this horrible scene of about 20 corpses that are so old, they're just bones with some leather and little bits of metal. You do notice, by the way, as soon as the, the light beams over your shoulders and reflects inside, there's some little glints of be gold or silver yeah, amongst the, the bodies and the, the rusted bits of armor and weapons that seem to be corroded with thousands, thousands of years of age. Now remember, you goblins, that's like millions of years. It's like purple. Yeah. It's so ancient, it's made forever ago. Hey, we only live 60 years tops, mm -hmm. but you mature by six. That's when we get a name. Yeah. <laughs> you survived to adulthood. Joe. Okay, so you guys see the, the, first name. this pitch black tunnel which works you through dark vision is no problem. You can go in there once you switch from color vision to dark vision. <laughs> there are so many bodies, it's difficult terrain to walk in. And just looking from them, it could be elk, it could be hobgoblin bodies, you can't quite tell. But some, some of the, the decorations that you can still make out, like the rusted metal that used to be on your armor, has death, definitive goblin look to it. Then you see some other pieces of, of, of band braces, stuff that look distinctly like they're elven before they rusted to nothingness. And then occasional glints of what could be gold bracelets, could be here. Could be possibly priceless magical weapon or armor. Who knows what? So. That's it. Well, I'm it, sure it's going to happen. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's going oh. to be very, it's going to be more than difficult terrain. <laughs> Just make sure to pick the goblins up and shake them off before they found what they found. <laughs> okay, get to the goblins and check their poop to see what they swallowed. The <laughs> no, I'm just saying it. Minutes, you could take 10 minutes to start doing your little kind of one-on-one uh, ritual. Okay. Or we could just clear a path. Well, I, uh, I want to climb something. <laughs> Whether it's the wall or a tree. You're going to be climbing horses. Okay. They told me there was an undead behind that wall. As you're all just looking on yeah. long looks into the dark, ominous tunnel where you're like, yeah. I'm going to start with my mm -hmm. staff, then I'm going to start dragging them to the left and to the right so I'm partying in a walk straight. Okay, so you're, you're pushing back past everybody? Partying in the bed seat. You're You've climbed up into the tree. Okay, so you're starting to like just hold like Chiron himself, hold some bodies and in the, in the, make a nice little path in there. Okay, so you, so you start to make a little path. You've got uh, pretty much, you know, let's say that much of your five foot reach cleared out. <coughs> you guys doing anything while he's pulling dead bodies out? I'm, I'm readying an arrow. Yeah. I'm okay, gonna... you're paranoidly sitting there with your boat creaking because you got one ready. Yeah, I'm like trying to I, I've got a spell I'm just putting in my chest. Yeah? Yeah, what, what, what spell is this? Oh, well, well, that's a that channel for Vinny, so you can probably listen to it. Say, Pot of Water Bing Bang! Yeah, but I've got it. I'm not going to do it right now. Mm -hmm. First one I see move, though. Especially since he told you, I distinctly sense undead here. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, a, it's a perception check to see if I can notice any of them like moving around. Can you give me a perception check and see what you see? Oh, 19. A 19? Do any of them seem like a little, little shifty? 
You do you notice that as he's like pulling bodies, the way the bodies are piled upon each other, they're kind of like pulling each other apart. So there's like this general undulation of the piles when one's being moved out. So you don't quite see anything there. But you do notice that one of the bodies has something like draped over its head that seems to be not nasty old and rotted, but just covered in tens of grime and dust. Looks like cloth or, or possibly some kind of hat. I'm going to use my short sword and then try to flick that cloth. Okay, so yeah, you're so reaching I'm, in there? Yeah, I'm reaching in there. Okay. I'm going to pick him <laughs> So you're like jumping into the pile he's making to try to reach it? Yeah. Okay, give me a, a uh, acrobatics as you're trying to do this one legged. Uh, 13. <laughs> 13? Okay, you reach over and you have no clue what he's doing. He's just like maybe he's trying to help you in his own special little funny mm -hmm. way. <laughs> and immediately yeah, you reach special. over and you grab this this fabric and as you start to lift it up, it looks almost like a bed cap hat. Mm -hmm. Or possibly as you're moving it, it's like pulling the cobwebs off and the dust is coming off it. And it, it seems to be made of bright cobalt blue with some kind of arcane symbols. You've been doing the cloth, but like the cloth, yeah. it's got like uh, two stars and a moon. Well, arcane symbols. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're kind of interested in this thing you're pulling out because it's coming out spotless as the dust and the webs are, are being left behind as you're pulling it out of the pile. And the fact that it's not rotting in the fabric, I mean, it's something special about it. So I'm going to reach over it's with not my staff and stick it on the staff. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> you're, you're appropriating it. Um, you sense that it has an unusual aura about it. <laughs> now you want to go outside and see what the is. Well, I'd have to just identify that and mm -hmm. figure out what it is. Or go out and take a shirt rest and play with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Another <laughs> hour. <laughs> you guys mind if I play with this? Can you give me some? <laughs> <laughs> so wow. going give me some space, space to go play with myself. I'm going to turn the other way. <laughs> oh, you're yes. turning red. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the bugbear is turning red. I'm going to say, I can is like completely unaware of the, the double up. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, what? What? <laughs> I think that might be the only thing that people are doing. Just over there. <laughs> Either he's, not, he's, he's gonna act unaware. I'm not. I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not sure if he's aware. Is, is he aware and just playing coy, <laughs> like waiting for the trap? <laughs> so you're like moving the pile as he's walking out with his new treasure trove. There's probably more. How long is it? Seven in the bag. I'm not sure. The other store is like two twenty-five, I think. Um, so, so you're you're walking off with the hat where you're taking him to rummage through the bodies to make a hat. I'm gonna shove in my sack right now and uh, <laughs> keep going. Okay. Because I always find that ridiculous. You can I realize that as much as I'd like to, yeah, there's probably more in it. Okay, uh -huh. so, so uh, you're, you're sitting there over Granger and you're like poking with your staff and as soon as you poke, it seems like you poke with the rib cage and you pull it out by the rib cage to your, your staff and the rib. All of a sudden there seems to be a little cav cascade of, of bones just falling and falling away. Almost like something underneath pushed them away but you don't see anything. And then about a half second later, from the dust that's poofed up from all of this, you see a spectral visage of an elf slowly walk. All glowing blue light. So in common, I say, greetings, old man. Mm, that's, that's actually good. Go on, roll addition. No. <laughs> Twenty-one. Oh, no, where? Twenty. Are you outside or inside? Uh, Eighteen. Know. She's in the tree. I'm in the yeah. tree watching over you guys. Do you want us to even out, even being outside? Yeah. Okay. Um, Eighteen. 
And what's your driver's name? Uh, 18. 18? Oh, well, I'm still going last. <laughs> uh, yeah, you definitely beat me because of my deck size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you acknowledge it. It kind of gives you this, this queer look, like it's not understanding what you're doing here. And, and you're noticing further back, spectral forms are pulling themselves out of the, the bone piles here. These all seem to be very, very high worn elves. Just from the look of the armor and the jewelry that you're seeing on Amazing. these factories of their, <laughs> what they believe they look like. Long ears. Wow. And the eyes look funny to you. They don't look like normal elf eyes. They're glowing with intense energy. Now, of course, this is how they look to themselves. So the question is, do you want to do like a mechanic check or a history check? Yeah. Or do you want to take action against the map? So. Yeah, I'm going to say something like, hey, Liska, um, <laughs> act on. <laughs> hey, you guys. Ooh, crit. So, so well, that's a skill. So, so what skill do you need? 24, arcana. Okay, so immediately looking at them, you're realizing they're specters, of course. You know, unfinished business type of thing. But what you're really picking up when you're looking at them, arcana wise especially, because there's a, that little bit of goblin wizard that you are, that, that, that you, you know from history is probably stolen from another culture. I actually hate to do it. <laughs> Before you guys made your version of them. You swear that these don't look Quite like high elves. They look like the ladder. Okay. The fade, top of the top of the high elves. Or as in their, their annoying kind of call themselves the pure ones. Because to me, I think the ladder is like Nazi elf bastards. They look down on other cousins. Kids. Kids. So at that point, then I, I would have said, I would end them and say, greetings, pure ones. Excuse me. Okay. And it's still looking at you like it's trying to answer a question it doesn't quite know the answer to. And it's looking at you. And it's, it's like it's not comprehending what it's seeing and hearing at the same time. Maybe it doesn't understand color. It's far gone. Probably. would be able to speak to that more than I would probably know. Mm -hmm. Back to that, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not, I'm not studying. Well, you know enough that you know ghosts. You know, you roll really freaking amazing. You know things that like uh, usually they're resistant to things like acid, cold, fire, lightning, thunder, bloody, piercing, slashing from non-magical weapons. You know, probably Everything. poison and necromancy. Virtually. Uh, probably immune to being grappled and exhausted, Sean. Uh, uh, so really, divine things are really going to be the key here. Oh, but you did roll an extra 20, right? It was a skill check, yeah. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> I'll give you that you know the thing directly right in my thumb tip. The INC or the SU? The SUA. Okay. So you know that. I'm going to stick the. Uh, And it's your, all of a sudden you step back and realize there's light in the little semicircle around here. Mm. Pretty much right where you're standing. All of a sudden you look down and realize about five feet in front of you the, the sunlight ends. And right over the goblin, his little short head is just within the sunlight. Funny thing is I can do it throughout that door. Jump forward. <laughs> Tor towards it or just or further into the tunnel? Both. <laughs> hey, violence is my answer to any, almost I any challenge. I want to have something. Okay, so, so Ranger, says, no, they're don't. inside there. On second thought, don't do that. I'm not a Ranger. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm not having to go. You're Ranger Light. Ranger Jason. <laughs> Literally, the player's name is Ranger Jason. Yeah. It's true. That's how that exactly works. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so if you're telling him to jump forward, then you're like, no, 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 
not on second thought, and then it just start. Yeah, you're, 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 you're quickly getting thick and stabby. I start rattling off quickly the their resistances to him. Okay. And so I say the reason you're not moving forward is just because you're in the sunlight, as am I. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Bow. <laughs> <laughs> We need to uh, leave before the sun goes down. Uh, yeah. Okay, got or close ten. the gate. Close the gate. I've got ten regular arrows and eighteen magic arrows left. Let's see. Did you read it right? Hmm. Yeah, they can. They just would rather not. I'll just make sure you have the right speed. What? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I just say they can. They'd okay. rather not. Yeah, they're not coming to sunlight. So rogue. They're up in their trees. So they're like me. They're, they're, they're in the cave talking. We so would you allow me to stick my staff underneath his backpack and move him over okay. next to me or beside me as opposed to him being out in front of me? Um, I'll give you a few minutes. He's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, Rogue, it's you. I'm hot. There's nothing happening yet. Go ahead and give me a high roll. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. That way you're blending in with the tree. Mm-hmm. And at that exact moment is when the tree branch comes down to grab you. 24. Whoa. The group watch I am, I am so hidden. They knew you were in the tree somewhere. You're just like a hidden leaf. But now you think I'm trees. somewhere else. I have gone through different tree. <laughs> Okay, so I'm assuming our major said her decks in our clerk. Yeah. Yeah. So what would you like to do? Ah, uh, do I want to go shooty or stabby with this thing? I mean, yeah, I'm looking at that flaw. They do look like glowy, and it's not a flaw, it's inspiration. Yeah, I, 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 no, I know, I know, I know, that's, that's, that's kind of why. It's, it's, <laughs> but I'm also looking at the fact that my, my, my quiver of regular arrows is down to half. Like I, I, I can get, I can I can stab him with force damage with my planar warrior feature. I, it's still it's still light in this little square. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be yeah I'm gonna be curious. Boldly walk up to it. I'm walk up there. Wow. Drop on my planar warrior energy. Okay. And stab him with my my uh, short sword. Okay. Go ahead and give me the uh, roll there. Uh, that would be a, a twelve. A twelve. So you summon up your planar energy. Yeah. It's kind of looking at you like oh, it's recognition when you get close to it, and it's like goblin. Yes, goblin. And it almost does the scanners look. Ah. You, you mean uh, 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 body scanners? Yeah, you said scanners. Oh well, I, Sc- is scanners is, uh, is the, uh, the head uh, one. Isn't yeah. that the one where the, the guy goes at the oh. very end? The no, 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 well. Uh, no, that's, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, at least to me, the, is, um, is, uh, Body Sanders, the, the one in the 70s. Either way. Yeah. Spooky scary. Yeah. It goes yeah. like that. You roll the 12. 12. And you do it. Ooh. Ooh. And this is force damage. Force damage. And that is a whopping six. Six is good. Yes, six is greater than zero. Six, six is great. So force is good. You, and you notice force. when you when you hit it, it 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 recoils from your attack like ah! yeah. And it sadly it pulls its hand away, and all of a sudden you're seeing like a dent in the armor you didn't really recognize, and it seems to be like that wound did sexual Is it? Is that, <laughs> that's the wound that killed it, and it seems it's got a hole in it. <laughs> okay, Claire. I know you had that that, that prayer to tip of your tongue. I do. And um, I'm going to speak it and then uh, turn undead. So, what does your turn undead do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, just. Makes him into an undead turnover? No. Each undead you can see or hear within 30 feet of you must make a wisdom saving throw. If the creature fails 
throat, it is turned for one minute and cannot, or, or until it takes any damage. Now the question is, are you going to be exposed? Yeah, that probably would be Or you nice. just want to scare that first one, and the other two will laugh at you from more than 30 feet away. Yeah. Ooh, she's going to Bodies. She's going to the dark. Bodies. I'm on the other side. Yeah, the dice is the body. It's the body. It's clear path. So this is where the sunlight no longer. Yep. And basically, you're stepping in the first bit of shadow. And one, two, three, four, five. Yep. And then one, two, three. Four. Yep. Push them in the light. So uh, turn <laughs> he's in like, run past all of them. Turn them dead. Okay. So what's the save? Uh, it is wisdom. Wisdom. What's the DC? Okay, um, here's this one. You would be close enough that I have to actually look. Ooh, the plus zero. This one! Son of a bitch, I got a double. Yup. And then this one. Ha ha! We have one winner. As these two seem to be ready to run away very quickly, as you say the words of your god, and they recognize those words. And you see the fear of the goblin hordes that murdered them by endless scores inside this temple. And I, and I tell everybody, do not hit the ones that run. <laughs> and Aconite friends. Because <laughs> I was, I was, I think. Hit the ones that give you shit. Because I'll wait for that opportunity to attack. Sorry. <laughs> run, shank. <laughs> I would As, at least for right now. Okay. I'll, I'll be a good goblin. <laughs> good job. This time. So, Pal, you sense the undead. She's come up and said the words of her dark god, and then only the undead run like little girls. Um, like I will move up. How far do you move up? As far as I can. Lean on his cave. Right there. As far as I can go, that's where I can go. Okay, so you're basically there all. Oof. Still got an action. Remember, it is all difficult training to deal with all the thunder in the bodies. And the slight smirk that comes to your lip when you recognize all the dead elves by the droves. All the goblins who died have died in the god's name. Now, I'm able to tell which one's safe and which one didn't. Yeah, you obviously see these two are actually attacking the air right now. I will move, uh, I use my action to move up further towards the one that did not sit. Okay, so you got speed of 30? Yep. Uh, let's see. Right there. As you're crunching over bones and armor that's just turned into dust instantly. I wasn't hiding. <laughs> you would be able to move one more. Don't thing. crush the treasure. Didn't I get two squares up? Yeah. Well, you had these two squares. Okay. That was the furthest one that's right there. Don't worry. So you're just out of range, but it's okay. You feel like you'll come after you shortly. <laughs> Especially now that he sees a hobgoblin and a hobgoblin who just said the words of the dark god, and here you are and brandishing your armor of the super dragon. No! <laughs> and then a rage attack to wipe you all out. It's all no. actually a dragon trap. Not happening. Okay. You're not in charge of the minions. <laughs> so all of a sudden, it's yes, no. <coughs> their turn. Come here, right? You're right. You're right. You're right. All right. So this one. Lies. Literally, lies down the hallway. And then it's proceeding to do it again. That's the buster. And this one goes straight up. And you can see it. Or it's R2 is minion. Yep. I don't know. It's from the uh Tarkin edition. X something something and he's got a uh, rocket launcher and a minion something. Okay, and then this one. 
he comes up closer to the palace, and he's going to do his life training to access the And he will not have advantage of much money because he's all together. So he's hitting you with his. Uh, It's going to go for his life training. So, go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw. <laughs> it's a perfect time to save face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and the elf comes up and goes, Be glad you made that constitution save, or you have your hit point maximum reduced by your own amount. In other words, you don't go back to that if you have to recover your life force. You do not. It just looks at you like, ah, who's that? Stuck you with that life ring, your straw. And of course, you hear it saying, Elvin, by the way. Okay. That pretty hurt. <laughs> And he's gonna move out of range. Because then he gets an attack of opportunity. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna move back. Move his attack of opportunity? Yep. It has faith in the mess. See? My faith is reward. Okay, and it just wafts back, and it, it's glowing brighter now. It's feeling involved and filled with some life force of a hobgoblin in the West. This is like cherry pie. Okay, so top of the order, it's going to be our. This is all the description of it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I did one. No, no, you came up and. Oh, yeah, I came up that way. You, you, you did the movement. The double movement. I was going to say, now it's the wizard. See, we were flying through the air pretty fast. Like that, that one that took off went 100 feet in one, one little turn. <laughs> Which tells you they move pretty fast. Now remember, Cleric, you do have multiple divine channels. And I think on the range, based on the distance. Oh, it's damn true. Yeah. I can move up to here. Up to your feet. Mm -hmm. But then there's 20 feet from We can go, because remember, you can clear. So, 10, 20, 30. 10, 20, 30. Mm. Remember, you should your last year clear that square. Save me if I am stupid. As I bring my hand up and crackling energy erupts as a lightning bolt, and it flies forward and uh, it attempts to lasso him. He needs to make a strength DC of 12. So he's going to take damage and he's going to be pulled up to uh, 
10 feet, so. Okay, we'll take a quick photograph. Our road is in Columbus. Eight points of damage. Eight points of lightning damage. Yes, half damage. But Pretty much the resistance to everything, except magic weapons. Wait. <laughs> Even the shadow blade. Even, well, what is the shadow blade counts magic weapon? What does the descriptor say? Uh, uh, somehow I think the radio damage isn't included in there either. Uh, no. That's not. <laughs> it's such a scope to buy a spine. <laughs> and then with the, uh, like on my druid, Shillelagh, you know, like Shillelagh, for instance, this is also a magic weapon, a magic weapon sort of thing. Yep. So that's, right. like, that's been a fun one. That's the one for, for the druids, yeah. Shillelagh. It mm -hmm. makes them seriously powerful because they immediately have, for those shitty mobs, immediately, first level, I've got a magic weapon. Yeah, right. And that can make a huge difference. I mean, think about it. You're a uh, druid going after werewolves. Mm -hmm. I have a magic weapon. Oh, yeah. Because it goes back to those early 3.0 days where the descriptor of resistance to everything with magic weapons kind of popped off. And that's a good place to wrap it up there. Uh -huh. What about body doubles? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's a flashlight. I don't consent. I don't consent. <laughs> no, well, no, I, I, well, no. Well, there's, there's that.